My name is Jen, and I am on a journey in order to break free from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and in order to embrace a nourishing lifestyle. My roadmap can be described using an acronym of the word nourisher. So I'm doing daily video blog posts in order to encourage you, equip you, and keep you up to date on my progress. If this content is helpful or encouraging to you, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing with others. It is my deep desire that these videos would help to ignite nourishing transformations in us all. Hi everybody and welcome to day number 25 of my Nourisher Check-In. I have taken you out on my walk with me today as I check in um, for yesterday because as you know I had been doing so horribly with the S in the Nourisher acronym, the sleep area, because I was doing these check-ins at night and getting a second wind and staying up way too late. And that that ended up making my cravings and uh, making me really fatigued during the day. So instead, I am now checking in on one day for the previous day. So let me reflect on yesterday, day 25, with you together today. So N, notice my emotions. Yesterday was lots of wonderful things, lots of, um, it was a weekend, bocce ball in the park with the kids, uh, super fun, got out the soccer ball, really, really enjoyable, lots of time in nature, lots of really good positive feelings, but I felt like the positive feelings were just enough to kind of carry through some of the underlying sadness and grief and anger that that I was feeling and processing. And yesterday, what was really interesting, I felt like yesterday was like um, digging for root cause day because I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I was introduced to this concept of primary and secondary emotions. So the concept here is that there are some key core emotions that we feel and that there are other ones that aren't actually a core emotion, but is something that we almost use to cover, control, or cope with the more primary emotion. So for example, anger is a secondary emotion. So for if you feel sadness or if you feel fear, that is a very vulnerable emotion to feel. Whereas it, with anger, you have a bit more control. So often, um, if you're feeling, if I am feeling afraid or ashamed or sad, sometimes that will actually express or manifest as anger. I don't know if that makes sense. I'll try to put some resources uh, in the resource area below, in the comment area below, um, to, to help you dig into that a little bit more and do some of your own research to see whether or not that resonates as being true with you. So for me, of course, anger, as I've mentioned to you, is a very new, uh, new emotion for me. And when I feel it, I try, you know, to take time to let that emotion, um, you know, have kind of a physical outlet and uh, run its course, journal through it, do whatever I'm going to do through it. But then I've been trying to ask myself the question of what's underneath this and trying to let what for me is often sadness, grief, loss, trying to let some of that emotion out. So yesterday I tried everything to get that emotion out. It's very difficult for me to find my tears. We've talked before about Dr. Gordon Neufeld and um, his encouragement for us to f find our tears and how healing and nourishing they are and I have experienced and believe that that tears are a wonderful way to process some of our um, pent-up emotion um, but it was very very difficult for me to tear find my tears yesterday so I tried listening to particular music and um, tried to kind of go and see if I could have a cry in the shower and um, you know everything short of cutting onions <laughs> to try to get those tears out but Anyway, one thing maybe that multiplied some of the emotions yesterday was when opening up to others, um, you know, I'm here to tell you that opening up to others doesn't always go well. And sometimes in my case, when I was opening up um, some vulnerable places of my heart and some places of need um, to others, it wasn't met with, um, you know, emotional responsiveness or someone who was maybe able to tune into my emotional channel. So that is always a really painful thing. That's a thing that can send me as a trigger. If we're talking about understanding the cycle, it can send me right back to binging. Um, but that didn't happen yesterday, which is a great thing. But it did mean that the pain felt worse because normally when I would turn to, to binging or a disordered uh, pattern, 
that would help at least provide some comfort or some relief. Whereas this way, the pain just kind of stuck around. So um, yeah, a little, little bit hard, but again, so many wonderful positive things to help uh, maybe go on to that rewire the brain, you know, was active, was lots of smiles and giggles and laughs with the kids, music, wonderful things to help um, keep my, my brain in a healthy uh, rewired state. Insulin friendly eating went very well yesterday. Uh, no problems with that at all. Also, uh, we talked about sleep and this new filming during the day is really helping me with sleep. And hydration also went really well yesterday. Yesterday I used an essential oil in, um, in some water to give it a little bit more flavor, which was really enjoyable. And where am I? E, exercise. Exercise was um, just with the kids, kicking around the soccer ball, bocce, walk-in, um, just really enjoying outside together. So it was really nice that it was um, not too strenuous and yet very natural and enjoyable and fit into the day. So my reward today, uh, isn't it a re weird reward to think I may be able to, you know, really feel sad one day, <laughs> really feel sad in a way that, and be able to express that sadness to other people. So my kids recently were watching the movie Inside Out. So spoiler alert, hope I don't wreck it for you. But in the movie, basically, as, as you know, if you've seen it, the... Um, the main character, the main cartoon character's emotions are portrayed as they try to help her navigate her life and her day. And primarily joy, the emotion of joy, is trying to ensure that her life is dominated by joyful experiences. But the joy character is, is not able to bring joy um, into some difficult situations. And somewhere through the movie, the joy emotion character realizes... I can't do this without sadness. I need sadness to help the, the character. I need, I need the main character to be able to express sadness to those that she loves for them to be able to come close and help her. And that was such a good reminder for me. And that's maybe part of the, the reward down the line is, will I be able to express emotions in a vulnerable, raw way to the point where other people will be able to see my needs that are often so, you know, those of us with um, eating disorders so, so, so often, um, you know, the, the clinical trials say that so often these are, we're perfectionists and high achievers <clears throat> and make it very difficult for our needs to be known and don't even necessarily, for me, I don't even know necessarily know how to express my needs. I think I'm expressing them so blatantly and clearly and yet sometimes it just passes by um, other people and and they don't catch it. So I'm sure, you know, not to say that's all my fault or all their fault, but it is this, this dynamic that I look forward to the day when I can express my needs and desires and wants a little bit more clearly in a way that other people and, and my sadness so that people can, can come close and join me in that. So that's my check-in for today. And I am already looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye for now.